Uh, former professional boxer here in Philadelphia and current uh, board member of the Veteran Boxers Association. Just before we get started, to share uh, a real brief story. Uh, over the years, a number of uh, boxers that I know uh, have expressed an interest uh, to me in getting into Philadelphia politics. Uh, one of the things I always advise them, stick with boxing, it's a hell of a lot safer. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, uh, we're very... Um, Delighted to be a part of this event tonight. Uh, so all of you uh, can listen to the candidates, um, hear their positions, and also so each of you can you know, make a informed decision when you go out and vote in next month's election. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to our moderator this evening, Ben Manis from Philadelphia's uh, Graphical Leadership. Thank you. Ben. Thank you. Good evening, welcome to the Veteran Boxers Association, and welcome to Fort Richmond. For anyone who might be from outside the neighborhood, I hope we treat you well. <laughs> Tonight's battle, the battle for City Hall, includes moderated debates for the Office of Sheriff, City Commissioner, and City Council at large. This is the hottest election that will impact your lives as Philadelphians right now. Currently, there's a lot of media attention going to the national venue. Who's going to be the Republican candidate to challenge Barack Obama? But I ask you, what impact does that have on your property taxes? What impact does that have on your public safety? What impact does that have on the education of your children as we sit right here, right now in the city of Philadelphia? So tonight, you're going to know what your people are about when you walk out of here. And when you cast that ballot, you're going to know what position those candidates are taking as it affects your interests, whatever they may be, whatever your background may be. Tonight, we're going to have a moderated debate. So regardless of who you're here to support, please limit any and all heckling, cheering, and clapping. It only eats up their time, folks, and we don't have a whole lot of time when we consider three different debates. So, time limits will be strictly enforced. Let me break you down the guidelines. Candidates here tonight for the Office of Sheriff include Josh West, Republican, and Sherry Honkla from the Green Party. As you see by the empty seat, Jewel Williams, the Democrat, and personally selected, uh, recommended person of the departing Sheriff, John Green, has chosen not to be here. He was invited, hence the placard with his name on it. Opening speeches. Candidates shall be no longer than two minutes. After that, you will be receiving general questions. Both of you will respond to each question. You will have one minute to respond to each question. If you refer to the other candidate, they will have 30 seconds to rebut whatever they choose. You may waive that if you choose to. You also may waive to use less time if you do. At the end of your debate, you will have one minute to give closing statements and arguments. You will also have four questions, two each, that are personally selected. Not by me, but by the folks out in Philadelphia who want to know more about your personal background. It doesn't get too personal, so don't worry. It's effective to your job performance if you are elected to the Office of Chair. Do you understand the rules? Yes. Yeah. Without that... We're going to kick it off. <clears throat> Question number one. Both candidates will respond. What is your understanding of the responsibilities and duties of the Office of Sheriff, as well as the laws the Sheriff is sworn to uphold once they're in office? Two sub-questions to consider while you answer. What is the impact and consequences to the city of Philadelphia and its residents therein? that occur when the office is not functional, as it's been for over a quarter of a century. And what repercussions or penalties exist for the sheriff who fails to execute these duties? Starting left to right, from my angle, go ahead, Josh. Very simple, the sheriff is the chief peace officer of the county. He enforces principally Title 18, which is the uh, crimes code in Pennsylvania, but he's also governed by Title 42, which is your judicial code. The sheriff's principal functions, in addition to general law enforcement, 
is he guards the court, he executes civil process, he transports prisoners, he seizes properties at the order of the court and sells those properties real and personal uh, to satisfy debts and so forth. As far as what happens when the sheriff doesn't do his job as he has for the past, uh, past quarter of a century, very simply what happens is you start getting banks, you get lenders who look at this city and say the city is a bad risk. That when we get a, when we get a bad uh, tenant or we get a bad uh, mortgager, we can't get the property back. We can't get it sold. It's, we're going to lose money on this, which drives the cost of uh, mortgages up. You'll see mortgage rates in the city are higher than they are in the surrounding counties. And you also see business investment in this city not come in. When I was out in uh, Montgomery County as the sheriff's department about a year ago looking at sheriff's sales. And I ran into a guy who lives in the city. He's a contractor in the city. And we asked him what he was doing. He was looking at properties to buy out there as investment. We said, do you own anything in the city that you rent? And he said, no, I won't own anything in the city. He lives in the city, he works in the city, but he owns and rents everything out in Montgomery, Delaware County. He said, out there, he knows if he gets a bad tenant, he can get rid of him. He can get his property, he can get his money back. When the sheriff doesn't do his job, business, and it's a ripple effect throughout the city. Businesses don't feel like they can come in. They don't feel like the rule of law exists. And with that, that was a 30 seconds, I mean, you get 30 more seconds. Oh. <laughs> well, since I didn't have my opening statement, hi, I'm Josh West. <laughs> my apologies. I am uh, a 19 year veteran in the military. I've been deployed twice. I've commanded, I've been on staff, I've uh, been downrange. I've enforced international law both as a platoon leader and as a staff officer on my last deployment. I understand what this department does what it does, what it needs to do, and understand what it can do and how it can benefit the city and the residents here. I stand for the rule of law, but I'm also an absolute constitutionalist. I'm the guy that will sit there and say, if I did the wrong thing, I did the wrong thing. If my officers, if my deputies do the wrong thing, they did the wrong thing. I stand for law and order, I, and I stand for the rule of law, and I, but I stand for civil rights. Thank you. The yellow is 30 seconds, the red is time, just in case you guys can't. Sherry, you can go ahead with your opening statement, and Josh, I'll give you a little extra time at the end, I'm sorry. Um, so go ahead with your opening statement, then you can answer the question. Sure. Uh, my name is Sherry Honkala. I'm running for Philadelphia Sheriff on the Green Party. The Green Party is a party that refuses to take money from the banks and as well as corporations. Uh, every seven seconds in this country, a family is going into foreclosure now. There will be over a million families that will lose their homes this next coming year. Here in Port Richmond and in Fishtown, those are the areas of the city right now that have the highest foreclosure rates. I'm committed to keeping families in their homes. I'm running on a zero foreclosures platform and uh, I will uphold a higher law and that is one that protects um, all Philadelphians, not just the banks, the developers and the speculators. And the question? Um, I, you know, uh, as sheriff, my responsibilities are to protect the courtroom, uh, to transport prisoners, as well as to put writs on families' doors and to sell their properties, and to uh, uphold uh, court orders. And as sheriff, I will make sure for the first time in the last 30 years that uh, Philadelphians are protected and that the uh, the money that they took off with, the, fi the $56 uh, million uh, as a part of the one-party uh, town that we live in, the Democratic Party, that uh, we will make sure that that money is returned to uh, Philadelphians um, that deserve to have their money back, the taxpayers. Next question. Neither of you have ever served in civilian law enforcement, nor have you served in the office of the sheriff. What will you do to earn the trust of the rank and file within the sheriff's office, and what experience do you have to do this? Starting with sheriff. Well, I've never served as law enforcement, but it's no secret I know a lot about law enforcement. I have over uh, 200 arrests, and I know a lot about being transported, and uh, I know how, a lot about how it works. Uh, for 25 years, I've um, fought for families to get access to the basic necessities of life, uh, whether it was being denied health care, being denied uh, battered women's shelters, whether it was being denied uh, any of the basic necessities of life. And so I've 
practiced my First Amendment rights and participated in nonviolent civil disobedience. So I know a lot uh, from an inside perspective on how things really work. Um, uh, in terms of get, gathering trust uh, from within the Sheriff's Department, to me I think that the priority is, is that we regain trust within Philadelphians. Uh, because it was in the Sheriff's Department that the $56 million went missing and uh, that's more than one individual that's going to be, uh, you know, I think facing uh, federal indictments as a result of the forensic audit that's taking place and uh, $56 million is a lot of money. So uh, my first job would be restore uh, trust uh, from Philadelphians. Mr. West, same question. Yes, sir. Well, as I said, you know, I'm not a, I haven't been a sheriff's deputy and I haven't been a police officer. I am, do have a degree in criminal justice from Temple University. Uh, but what I've done uh, in that respect is, as I said, on my deployment to Bosnia as a platoon leader, uh, my job was to enforce international law, and I had three towns that I supervised in that capacity. And I didn't just supervise law enforcement, but I supervise the mayor, I supervise the courts, I supervise uh, governmental functions and report back to my commander on what, how they were working. So I do have experience in working and understanding international law and understanding and working with police departments. Now as far as gaining trust within the department, you're right. You know, there's, there's a big issue with the fact that 22 years of corruption and money walking has has caused the department to lose, um, for the uh, public to lose faith in the department. But as far as inside the department, it's a matter of leadership. What I'll provide to the, to the rank and file deputies in that department who are good, hard-working people. They're not the, the deputy sitting in the courtroom was not the deputy misallocating $56 million. All right, what I'm going to provide for them is leadership. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to work with them, I'm going to go out on the streets when we go to enforce warrants. I'm going to stand in the courtroom and see what they do. I'm going to lead by example. All right? As for, I will get their trust. There's no question of that. I've done that as a commander. I've done that as a platoon leader. Uh, as far as getting the trust with the city and understanding that, I've said it before. All right, we're going to take this. There's not going to be any kind of insular, insular action in the department. Everything is going to go to the U.S. Attorney, the um, State Attorney General, to the um, District Attorney. Everything will be open. We will figure out where that $56 million goes. And we're not going to give it to the city to let it go down another rabbit hole. We're going to find out who it belongs to. That's the sheriff's responsibility. And we're going to get it back to this displaced owners. Thank you. Thank you. The, first, the next question, one minute to respond, will be to Mr. West. This is a general question. So, Ms. Honkel, you will have the uh, opportunity to answer it as well. How does the Office of the Sheriff contribute to the overall public safety of Philadelphia, and more importantly, how should it contribute to the, city, the city's overall public safety effort if you are elected? Philadelphia has had a revolving door policy in the courts where we bring offenders in, they get arraigned, and the city underwrote their bail and put them back out on the street. They didn't show up for court, there was no way of collecting the bail money for them, and we've got these violent offenders who just sit out there on the street and you know, the city hopes that someday they'll be stopped in a traffic stop and picked up. One of the key functions of the Sheriff's Department is they enforce those warrants, those failure to appear warrants, the 15,000 failure to appear warrants that are sitting in the city at any one time. And these are the offenders. Most crimes are not committed by a person that commits one crime and then goes home. These are repeat offenders, what are called, what are called recidivists. I will, I will make sure that the Sheriff's Warrant Unit is out there every day. We're going to enforce those warrants, we're going to find those recidivists, those repeat offenders, and we're going to bring them in. That, doing that, getting the people that are actually committing the crimes off the streets, is what's going to how the sheriff's department is going to contribute to public safety in this city. Ms. Honko, and I, I'm committed to going after the criminals as well. Uh, I'll start with uh, finding the 56 million dollars and make sure that uh, people are held responsible for taking off with the 56 million dollars. There's been no hearings. There's been no outcry in the city around that missing money. And secondly, I'll go after some other criminals, which is uh, the banks that have been dropping bombs in our neighborhood and leaving 40,000 abandoned properties and where the city's having to pick up the bill and uh, board up the properties and mow the lawns and that kind of stuff and uh, make sure that we enter into a class action suit and that we sue these banks 
and that they're held responsible for the blight in our neighborhood, starting with Port Richmond. Thank you. Final general question. Starting with you, Ms. Hanko. One minute. How would you streamline and improve the sheriff's office's core duties, including court security, force protection, warrants, bail enforcement, prisoner transport, and the almighty sheriff's sale? Well, I think, uh, uh, first, you know, I would compile the best uh, transition team, and I would begin to interview the 223-some employees within the Sheriff's Department, and I would finally get to the bottom of finding out what exactly they're doing, how much it is that they're getting paid, and then make changes accordingly. And, uh, you know, I stated in my opening statement uh, that, you know, every month, uh, upwards of 2,000 properties are sold, and uh, I will not put writs on families' doors. There is no programs available for Philadelphians that are now facing foreclosure, so I will stop all home foreclosures until we deal with the, the problem of the 40,000 vacant properties, and I'm committed to keeping families in their homes. Mr. West, same question. Thank you. Simply, as far as the financials go, a simple commercial off-the-shelf accounting program, one that the system no, If Best Buy uses it, if Sears uses it, it's good enough for the Sheriff's Department. We don't need a multi-million dollar custom-built system. As far as things such as sheriff sales, one of the key, pro, key points in my program is I'm going to abolish the live sale. Right now, we have some, uh, the sheriff sales are done at obscure times and obscure locations in West Philadelphia. Very few people go to them. We can't sell that many in a given day. I'm going to go to a completely electronic system. I'm going to put the sheriff's sales online where we're going to be able to get, right now I'm even looking at eBay, there are several sheriff's departments around the country that are doing this. And what they're going to do is we're going to put all, we're going to be able to put all the houses, all the property up for sale at the same time and give them a six day window. You're going to have a national audience. It's going to push the price up. It's going to guarantee those properties get sold. But what's more important is the higher the price the properties get sold at, which is what this is going to produce, means more money back to that dispossessed owner, more of, his, more of their equity back in the property. Thank you. Okay. For entering Section 2, questions will be directed at the candidate with a response rebuttal, if necessary, from the opponent. No, this is still a one-minute question. Each question responds to one. Okay? Since you took the last question, we'll start with you, Mr. West. Currently, the Sheriff's Office is staffed with between 200 and 250 sworn employees. How would you be able to accomplish the expansive duties described in your introduction and in your first couple of questions in the current municipal fiscal crisis? Well, one of the key things I intend to do is I intend to take the Sheriff's Department back to being a self-sufficient row office, the way the row office is designed to work. There's, everything the Sheriff does is a fee associated with it, and the Sheriff's Department has not been collecting its fees. The Sheriff's Department can easily collect, it has a $15 million budget at the moment, it can easily collect over $21 million in fees with just the people and the task it's doing now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect those fees, I'm going to make sure they're accounted for, and we're going to use those to pay for the Sheriff's function. It's the way it's designed to work. That's, and finally, that $15 million, I intend to give that back, once I get the system working, I intend to give that back to the city. And say the Sheriff's Department is going to be self-sufficient, we're going to pay for ourselves, and the city can use that $15 million somewhere else. Response. Well, I would start off by first taking a huge pay cut. There's no reason that the sheriff uh, needs to get a salary of over $100,000 a year um, to be sheriff. And the second thing that I would do is I would uh, begin to go after the Democratic Party slush fund. Um, because if people know how the sheriff's office really works, it's really actually a slush fund for the Democratic Party in terms of providing contracts, uh, homes are sold that are like $300,000 a property um, to friends for $10,000. Uh, the, all the contracts that are there. Um, so it's just like passing around money to the Democratic Party, and I would begin by eliminating, the, eliminating that. Do you, uh, for follow-up, do you want to give specifics on how you would attack that slush fund, or what in particular? Are you talking about yeah. jobs? Are you talking about con no big contracts? Exactly what would you do to end that? 
all the above. Um, I know that uh, there's, you know, a couple newspapers in particular that wouldn't be in existence if a family that wasn't in foreclosure had to pay themselves $2,000 to put advertisements in, uh, like the public record. Um, in order to uh, advertise that their home is in foreclosure and being sold. Any response, Mr. West? I actually agree with what Sherry just said. The fact is, Reach Communication wouldn't set foot back into the Sheriff's Department. There won't be any. We've been talking about an electronic system. There's going to be very little printing. The only printing the Sheriff's Department is going to have to do is the mandatory printing, which goes in the uh, office of the Sheriff's Department for people to come and look at it. We'll be able to go online, you know, and I... I caveat that with we do have to put in the um, legal intelligencer, which is not a slush fund paper the, uh, here in the city. But as far as that, if you put everything above board, you have a transparent system where you're accounting for everything. People can go on the website and see what, see where the money's being spent, see how it's being done. You can't have a slush fund. Okay, thank you, sir. Next question, Ms. Honkel. As you just said before, you've been arrested 200 times. There are also many photos available on the internet of you being arrested both in Philadelphia and Seattle. I'll put you on a frequent flyer. Um, how many times, well, you already said 200. Um, do you have a record from any of these arrests, and how would that preclude you from carrying out the duties of sheriff, i.e. being act to certify having arrest authority and carrying a firearm? Um, I have over 200 arrests and I have human rights defender status where um, the United Nations have decided because of my four boxes of unlawful arrest, I've had to uh, sue the city of Philadelphia because none of these arrests um, were legitimate. Uh, I did six months daily reporting probation for obstructing the view of the Liberty Bell because I moved homeless families in front of the Liberty Bell. Um, our country is founded on people fighting for these basic uh, rights, and uh, those are the only things that I've been arrested for. So you have no felony convictions? I don't have any felony convictions. Mr. West. Sir. For the many months before and after the primary election, you were an uncontested Republican candidate for sheriff, yet many Philadelphians have not heard of you nor are aware of your candidacy. Why is this? because I'm a Republican in a Democrat city. So the Sheriff's Office has been controlled for, well, as you said, a quarter century by the same man. It was, the Republicans never realistically put up a candidate. So the fact is that, yeah, run, leading up to the primary, I was uncontested because I was the only one that stood forward and said, I want to run for Sheriff. This is an office I, can, I care about. This is, I, I feel passionate about this. So, yeah, up until the primary, I was uncontested. After the primary, unfortunately being a, a new father and a National Guardsman, I've been either busy with a new son or off playing Army uh, in various parts of the country for a good part of the summer. Very good, sir. Final question to Ms. Hockle. A large part of your campaign revolves around your commitment to not seizing properties for foreclosure. How do you expect to do that and continue the revenue collection duties of the sheriff in its needs to improve the general fund of the city of Philadelphia in its current fiscal state? Um, I think that there's, uh, these are different times right now and they call for different measures. That, uh, you know, when we have a situation where we have Port Richmond having the highest foreclosure rate when uh, every seven seconds a family is going into foreclosure, it means that we have to stop. We have to stop adding to the 40,000 abandoned properties, and we can begin to put people to work by rehabbing those properties, turning those properties back to the neighborhoods, um, creating jobs, as well as beginning to deal with the blight in our city. And we've got to stop talking about it. It's not going to change with a one-party town. And uh, that begins with breaking the machine and electing me as sheriff. But according to your prior response, um, you're, in addition to stopping foreclosure in the city of Philadelphia, you also intend on suing banks for predatory loans, which is understandable. But uh, in, in Actually, to correct you, 
uh, suing the banks for causing blight in our communities. And actually, 15 other cities across the country, I mean, 15 other cities across the country are beginning to do this. My question is, if that is done, and the banks do not have the confidence, or they choose for whatever reason not to lend in Philadelphia, uh, what does that do for the poor that we're trying to help? Well, I think that it does actually the opposite. Uh, it puts us in a better negotiating situation when we have all of the, uh, the homeowners coming together and forcing the banks back to the table. The banks receive billions of dollars in bailout money, and they have not bailed out any of the hardworking Philadelphians, and uh, they need to come back to the table. Thank you. At this point, we'll go into closing statements. I will not forget this time. Mr. West started off one minute. Thank you, sir. Like I said, the key thing for the Sheriff's Department, the Sheriff is the Chief Peace Officer of this city. And, the, and what he can do for business, for investment in this city, is to make sure the rule of law is enforced. To create that confidence in the banks, in the lenders, to come into this city, into the investors, and to say, yes, I'm going to come into Fort Richmond, I'm going to come into Kensington, I'm going to come into North Philadelphia, and I'm going to buy a property, I'm going to invest in creating that affordable housing that this city needs. But when the sheriff won't do his job, when the sheriff refuses to do his job, those people are simply not going to come. All of these things sound <coughs> wonderful, you know, rehabbing, rebuilding, and doing so, doing so. The money has to come from somewhere, and that money comes from investors. And the way to get investors in here is for the sheriff to show, to show the people, not only the people of the city of Philadelphia, but the people of this country, the investors, that yes, the rule of law exists in this city. Thank you. Ms. Hockle, one minute. Uh, we need to go after these criminals. Uh, we need to go after the banks that are forcing not just these families, but we're talking about children out onto the street of Philadelphia because they refuse to come to the table and modify hardworking people's loans. And we also uh, we need to begin to um, uh, be about the business of keeping families in their homes and uh, that means supporting somebody like me that's actually going to break the machine in this town. If we can make history by electing me sheriff, then um, we can stop this town from being a one-party city and really be about the business of promoting a democracy and engaging in fair elections and not using uh, the sheriff's office as a slush fund uh, to enhance a few in this city, but to be about the business of being for all of us. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, we're concluding the sheriff's portion of the debate. Let's get a hand for our two candidates.